Welcome back to the channel. In my last video I showed you how to process your M51 Whirlpool Galaxy data created by your one-shot color camera in Pixinsight as a beginner. Coming from here and this is a processed version. In this video, however, as a second part, I want to show you how to add your narrowband data, your H-alpha and O3 data and add it to your already processed image. Without further ado, uh, enjoy the video. In my last video, I showed you how to process this data. I used my 90mm Apple and the L-Pro filter. And after processing, which I showed you in this video, I got this nice looking image of M51 and its companion galaxy, including those nice uh, dust, dusty structures here. And in this video, I want to show you how to add H alpha data into this image. And here I have my raw data, my H alpha and O3 data, hydrogen and oxygen data. Here I used my 90mm Apple as well, but I did not use a L Pro filter, a broadband light pollution filter, but a L Extreme filter, a narrowband filter, which is really nice to get all the H alpha and oxygen signals here. This is quite noisy, this is an unprocessed image and please watch my last uh, Pixinsight beginner tutorials to, uh, to know how to process this image. And after processing I, I was able to get this data and in this image you really can see all this uh, H-alpha regions, star forming regions and nebulae inside this galaxy and the companion galaxy as well as O3 signal. So let's close this one. And in this video, I want to show you how you can include this H alpha and O3 data and um, include it into your already processed image of M51 and its companion galaxy. First, most probably you will recognize that this field of view is really different from this one. Here you have the center, uh, with the M51 and the companion galaxy and here really it's off-center. And the first thing we will do is we will um, align those images to each other. And this we will do in Pixinsight as well. It's a nice process, you can find it in under process or process and go to dynamic alignment. Then you will select a first image, this one, and a second one, this one. This means the first image will be untouched and the second image will be cropped or rotated or whatever is needed to get the same appearance of the object as in picture one. Then you will select a bright uh, star, which you also can see in this image. Um, let's change this a little bit, make it more visible. And now let's search for a star patterns. Here, for example, you have this pattern of stars. One, two, three, four, five. You can see the same. One, two, three, four, five. So you will just select the star, click, and now um, the algorithm already placed a um, where it thinks the star is depicted in this image, but this is wrong, of course, because first we have to, to let the algorithm know where this star is, and this is most probably this star. You don't have to click right in the center, it will automatically do this for you. Then you do this for this star as well, and it already recognized uh, this uh, star. Then you do this for this one, this one and this one as well. And the algorithm already has an idea where it is in this uh, second image. Let's do this with uh, some more stars. Uh, sometimes it's really not so easy because this uh, H alpha and O3 signal looks really, yeah, different to what we can see on the right side. I would say we have those two stars here as well. And most probably that's this one and this one. Yep, 
let's check for other similar star uh, star constellations here and this you will do for more stars i will just fast forward this okay i think that's already enough um, to apply this uh, just press here and now we have a similar region and size or uh, field of view and size let's say um, just apply this here and now we have the same uh, section. I don't want to have all the H alpha signals from the stars applied to those stars because I'm quite happy with the color here. I just want to have the H alpha from the core region of M51 and its companion galaxy and add it to this one here. So that's why I will um, separate the stars from the main object here and for this I use Starnet 2. I already did um, two videos about how to install Starnet 2 in Pixinside. Uh, you can also do this uh, using other programs for example Star Exterminator but this one Starnet 2 is free and I'm really happy with it. Uh, since this uh, image has already been stretched uh, just uncheck here and we don't need uh, a separate image with stars we actually only need an image with the main uh, target or targets I have to say uh, here just uh, drag and drop this triangle on top of this image and wait a few uh, seconds or even minutes depending on your image that was quite fast because I used a planetary camera and the uh, image sizes are not so uh, big here just close this that's very nice. So now we have no stars and only our H alpha and O3 regions here. There are two or three more steps to do here. First is to rename this image. Go to right click identifier and in this case call it HA3. Just press OK. And now if you would apply the whole image or combine this whole image to this one or with this one uh, we would this would lead to a um, yeah, red color cast here in the background and this we don't want to have so we will make a mask here just go click here and now we want to increase the signal um, by stretching just go to histogram transformation uh, you can also find it here under process or processes and go to histogram transformation and now open a, select your black and white mask open your real time preview and then you will reset the data before maybe and move this middle slider to the left to make it brighter and this one to the right to make it darker. So we don't want to have any red color cast in our image. So make it quite dark like this and apply this. It doesn't matter if you skip any data here um, because that's only a mask. Yeah, maybe like this. Reset, close. And now apply this uh, mask here on top of the image you want to apply this to like this go to mask invert in this case the red region would be protected it's just to make it more visible to you here and we want to have the core uh, affected so invert the mask go to mask invert now only the bright regions will be affected Go to show mask, not to show the mask. Minimize this window. And now we will combine the H alpha and O3 data. With this image, just go to process, all processes, and click pixel math. I already included the equation you will need in red, green, and blue. Just copy this or write this in your uh, equation and that's why it was uh, really important to rename your image in HA3 what we did here and 
to control how uh, pronounced the H alpha should be in your image, uh, you use this value. If you increase it, you will see more red, that means more H alpha and more O3 data. So first let's apply and, apply and test this. Okay, it already did a thing. Um, I have to say it's a very, sometimes it's very a subtle difference, but let's zoom in. Um, that, that's before, that's after, before, after. Uh, we can try to increase this value. Let's try eight. Um, you can even increase this more. Let's try four. Now you can see it. <laughs> before, after, before, after. Yeah, that's personal taste, I would say. You can also try to increase the red here because it's adding red here. Open a real time preview, zoom in here, and maybe increase the red. But it's really personal taste. I would not do this. Uh, just close it. And for me personally, it's also too much now. Maybe let's go back. Maybe let's try three, for example. Apply this again. This before, after. Yeah, that's it. This is how you add your H alpha signal on the left and add it to this already processed image. I also have to add um, that I only uh, produced uh, two or three hours worth of H-alpha or L-extreme filter data with H-alpha and O3 signal. So if you would increase the signal, of course, you would get um, yeah, even more signal in the, end, uh, uh, in the final uh, processed image. So this is just to show you the principle. Uh, I would really highly recommend to, um, to collect more H-alpha and O3 data with your narrowband filter. Yeah, I hope you liked the second part as well of my M51 processing uh, tutorial video as a beginner. Um, thank you for watching and see you next time. Clear skies.